Hello out there. This is the uh, second day, or second video rather, of uh, Math Expressions, Volume 2. Uh, the second trio of pages is 137, 139, 141. There's a palindrome for you. Uh, so, up to that. So, I'll do all the prime numbers here, and hopefully that will refresh your memory <clears throat> of how to solve uh, addition problems involving uh, fractions, mixed numbers, technically. So what, what the, the main thing to think about here is that, uh, you know, lucky you, you're in fourth grade, and uh, they give you denominators that are the same. So that, that's one big thing in your favor. So if someone said, hey, Mr. Corcoran, I have eight and five-tenths of a set of baseball cards, and I say, well, that's great, because I already have nine and six-tenths of a set, well, you know that the 8 plus 7 is going to add up to 17, so now I have a bunch of whole sets of baseball cards. Well, the 5 tenths and 6 tenths is actually going to be 11 tenths. Well, that's a whole set right there plus another one left over. So if I take 17 plus the, well, 11 tenths is really 1 and 1 tenth. And if I take that 17 and add this 1, I now have 18 and one-tenth of, well, whatever it is we're talking about. Uh, here, for example, number three, and three is also a prime number, three says seven and three-fourths increased by four and two-fourths. Well, I could do the same thing. Seven and four will give me 11. Three-fourths plus two more fourths is five-fourths, which is, again, bigger than one. So now I have one and a fourth plus the 11 f I already had, so that's 12 and a quarter, a.k.a. 10 and 1 out of 4. The other prime number, oh, here. So 5, 3 and 2 fifths plus 3 and 3 fifths. 2 and 3 is going to give you 5 fifths. So you could say 6 and 5 fifths, or just put it all together and call it 7. Uh, that's not prime. Seven is, oh, speaking of seven, seven is prime. So here, here we get into uh, not addition, but the inverse, subtraction. So let's say I was feeling generous and I had seven and two-thirds of something and I wanted to share three and one-third of it. Well, if I, can, if I just ignore the whole numbers for a second, two-thirds decreased by a third leaves me with a third. Oops, one-third, not one other one, one-third. Because two-thirds minus one-third is the same as two minus one, one. And since I didn't have to use the seven or the three, seven decreased by three is four, so the answer would be four and one-third. And the way to visualize this, let's say we had seven, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So there's seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and two out of three, so I have another, whatever this is, chocolate bar, and I have two out of three. Now this, this is not there, there's nothing there. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and two thirds. And if I get rid of three and one third, it means gone, two, I'm giving that to Sev, those two plus this three, so I've, I've taken away three, and I'm also going to give Sev this one right there. I don't know why. He wants it. There. So I've got the whole thing represents seven and two-thirds decreased by one, two, three, and one of the third. So there you go. I have one, two, three, four, and that little third still belongs to me. Good. All right. So eight, nine, those aren't prime. However, um, what is, 11 is prime. However, I want to, like these, see that right there? And see this right there? Uh, so these right here, you have a, a number on the bottom that you can't take out of the top, right? You can't say, I have two sevenths. Do you want five sevenths of it? You can't just do that the way you did with this. Two thirds decreased by one third. You can do that easily. So, even though this is not prime, I'm going to, instead of doing 11, I'm going to do this. And here's what it looks like. Six and one-fourth is, I'll do circles this time instead of that. 
So I have six. I have six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six. And instead of a whole thing here, I just have one fourth. Those aren't there. It's just one, two, three, four, five, six, and a fourth. Now, I need to give away two and three fourths. Now the two is easy. I'm going to give away that. Whoop, and this one right here. Whoop. So right off the bat, I have had one, two, three, four, five, six, and a third. And I'm going to give away this and that. So that's gone, and this is gone. How about the three-fourths? That part's a little tricky. I have this fourth, but who says I can't just slice that into fourths and get rid of one, two, three-fourths? One, two, three-fourths. They're all going to go on a, a picnic, right? So again, Sev is, I, I have six and a fourth apple pies. And Sev says, can I get two and three-fourths of that? Say, sure, Sev. That's yours, that's yours, and one, two, three-fourths. You can have all that. So what do I get to keep? Well, I get to keep one, two, three, and these two-fourths, which is three, one, two, three, and two-fourths, also known as one-half. So you can say three and two-fourths. That's fine. Now, if you want to know what that looks like in the what they call a traditional algorithm, that's what this is. All right, so you have six and a fourth, six and one fourth, and you're decreasing it by two and three fourths. Well, hopefully what you remember is instead of six, you know, you can borrow from this just like you borrow from other subtraction problems. Six can become five, and then you have one. You, you, you took one out of there, right? Well, one is four fourths. So four fourths plus another fourth is five fourths. Decreased by three fourths is now two fourths. That's the two fourths I was talking about. And then five decreased by two is three. So that leads to the answer of three, three and two fourths and three and two fourths. Fifth, fifth grade teachers and sixth grade teachers would love if you said three and a half, um, whatever. Cool? All right, so any other numbers down here prime? Well, 13 is prime. If I have 1 fourth and another 7 fourths, uh, that means I have 8 fourths. And if you have 8 fourths of something, 8 divided by 4 is this. So you might as well just say 8 fourths is 2. Uh, 17, I'm pretty sure, is prime. 9 halves minus three, 6 halves leaves me with three halves, and three halves is like a half, right? This is one, two, three halves. That's one and a half. Uh, 19, oh, 19 is prime. Two fifths plus four fifths is six fifths, which is the same as, if I have five fifths, that's one. One and one fifth, okay? So those are, the prime problems, I did the prime problems plus I did, a, um, I did the subtraction problem that involves borrowing. Okay. So that's, that's 137. Okay, so these, strangely, I feel like this, if you could do, if you followed along with this okay, this is probably the hardest thing in fourth grade math. Subtracting um, mixed numbers where you have to borrow hardest thing in, in fourth grade fractions. This to me is actually easier. I don't know why this is here and that, whatever. Anyway, two is prime. Uh, do you remember how, how we do this? Right, they wanted a, fr a fraction, a fraction greater than one. So two and one fourth, you could say one, two, and a fourth, right? And how do you write that as a fraction? Well, if you put these as fourths, then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine. Nine fourths. And the shortcut mental math version is two times four is eight plus one is nine. Nine fourths. Two times four is eight plus one is nine. Nine fourths. That's the mental math. Um, so I'll do it here. This times this is what? Plus that is this. Right? That times this plus that is 83. 83 tenths. And I'm not going to draw 
Well, if I did, if I did do it, I would do something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Eight and three tenths. So I need to add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, no thanks. I'm not doing all that. Instead, I'm just going to say you break it into tenths, okay? So instead of one, ten tenths. Instead of one, ten tenths. Instead of one, yeah. Yep. Because one is the same as a number over a number. I could put 100 over 100. That's one. 77 over 77. That's one. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. One, two, three. 83 tenths. Next. Five is prime. Okay, this is the inverse. So how many threes fit in 26? You can count by threes. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. Yeah, 27, nope, so 24. So what is that? Eight, and then 24 is two away. Okay. What does that look like in division? Uh, oh, let's do it for this. So you could take the numerator, 59, and put the de denominator as your divisor, right? Still have to do mental math, 9, 18, uh, 20. 7, 36, uh, 45, 54, 63, 63 is too high, so I have to go to 54, and 9 times 6 is that, so I know it's going to be 6, then I subtract, that's 5, so it's 6 and 5 out of the divisor, which you'll remember is a denominator, so 6, 5 ninths. What else is prime here? 11 is prime. So 1 and 3 ninths plus another 7 ninths. I'll just add the fractions first. 3 and 7 is 10 ninths. And then 1 plus nothing is 1. Now 10 ninths is another 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. And another ninth left over. 2 and 1 ninth. 13 is prime. Ooh, subtraction. All right, so for this, if you have 10 fifteenths, you can't take 4 fifteenths, you can't take 10 away from 4, but if you call in for reinforcements from the 2, it might look something like this. So instead of 2 and 4 fifteenths, I'm going to say 1, because I need to borrow 1, and instead of saying 1, I'm going to say 15 fifteenths. And then the 15 fifteenths plus 4 fifteenths, that's 19 fifteenths. And then 19 minus 10 gives me 9 fifteenths, right? So then I still, this 2 became a 1, so it's going to be 1 and 19, 9 fifteenths. You know, your, your fifth and sixth grade teacher would just love it if you said 9 fifteenths. Wait a minute. That's the same as 1 and 3 times 3 over 3 times 5. Well, I can get rid of this. So really... The simplest form would be 1 and 3 fifths because you've simplified 9 fifteenths into 3 fifths. The last prime number, oh, is this one. And this is, so number 17 is easier, no borrowing. Look at our fractions, 2 and 7 eighths minus 1 and 2 eighths. 7 eighths decreased by 2 eighths gives you this. And then 2 decreased by 1 gives me that. And 5 is prime. 8 is not a multiple of 5, so we're good. And then last but not least, Manuela and Katie. What they do? Katie spent more time. All right? Katie, uh, Manuela spent more, so it's 1 and 3 fourths. Katie spent more time than Manuela, so I'm going to think it's add another 3 fourths. So if you have 3 fourths plus another 3 fourths, you get 6 fourths, and then that original hour is still there. But 6 fourths is another, so that's like 1, and 6 fourths, so that's 4 fourths plus 2 fourths, right? Because 6 fourths is this. That's 1. 1 and 1 is 2, and 2 fourths, but we don't say 2 fourths if we can say a half, so we say 2 and 1 half. Two and two-fourths is eh, acceptable. 
And boy, I'm getting thirsty. All right, last one, last page here. So multiply, uh, five times a third is five thirds, because if you have five whole, it's like five over one. Five times one is five, one times three is three. The second step to that though, to have five thirds, one, two, three, four, five. That's five thirds. So as you can see, five thirds, one third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds, five thirds is really one whole and two thirds. And I'll do that again here. Same idea here, four over one, because any all of these whole numbers are just three over one or super giant three or whatever you want to call those. So if I have four times a sixth, it's four over six. Now, five over three is bigger than one. Four out of six is less than one. So I don't have to do anything there aside from simplify. So four, I could divide that by two. I could divide this by two. Four divided by two is this, and six divided by two is that. So that problem's done. Here, let's see about number five, two times an eighth. Okay, so, well, if I have one eighth, that's one eighth. If I have two of them, it's two eighths. But you can divide both of those numbers by two. And then two divided by two is one, and eight divided by two is four. And one fourth, we call that simplest form. Seven, okay? Two, if I have three fourths of something and then two of it, well, you double the numerator, so that's six, because two times three is six. And that's a one, one times four is four. And six fourths is a one and a two fourths. One and two fourths. Uh oh, you remember. We don't say two fourths, we say one and one. All right, there you go. Why is it in a cloud? Because if you simplify this way, you'll put your math teacher on cloud nine. Ha, ha, ha. Anyway, nine is not prime. Eleven is prime. Good golly, is that for real? 24 times five eighths? Good golly. All right, 24 times five eighths. 24 times five is a lot. I need a snack. 5 times 4 is 20, 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. There you go, 120 over 8. And we can simplify that, divide it by 2, and I've got 60 out of 4. Divide that by 2, and I've got 30 over 2. Divide, oh, 30 divided by 2 is 15, so 11 is 15. I'm not a fan of that math problem. That's okay. I don't have to like it. All right. Here we go. 20 times 3 fifths. 20 times 3 is 60. 60 over 5. Do you know what 60 divided by 5 is? I don't know. 60. I know 60. I could divide 60 by 2. That's 30. I could. Oh, I can't divide 5 by 2. That's no good. All right. 60 divided by 5. Got to do it. I wonder if this is one of those kids who does Minecraft will get this problem right, because Minecraft uses 60s or something. I don't know. Five times one is five. Oh, look at that. Five times two is 10. All right, so 60 fifths is 12. Man, I wonder if my Minecraft students would get those right. Mental math, fun thing. All right, Shannon collects paper for recycling. Good for Shannon. She collects a third of paper, a third pound of paper every, every week. How many? How much paper will she collect in four weeks? Well, it's going to be probably more than a pound, so pound z of paper. So one pound times four is four thirds. Four thirds is actually three thirds plus one third. So that's one and one third pound of paper. One and a third pound of paper. One and one third pounds of paper? Eh. Shrug emoji. All right, last one. 19 is prime. Miss Suarez cuts, pe cuts a pizza into eight equal slices. Each person in her family ate two. If there are eight people, what fraction of the pizza did they eat? All right, so we've got 
Three people. One, two, three. Oh, those nice people. Okay, Miss Suarez's family. Uh, they each ate two. They each ate two slices. So eight equals slices. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, you have two. You have two, and you have two. Now there's eight, so that's two eights, two eights, two eights. Two, four, six. They ate six eighths of the pizza. And I wonder where that last two eighths went. I wonder if, like, Miss Suarez got to take it for lunch the next day. I don't know. So they ate six eighths of pizza. And remember, six eighths is one of those fractions you can simplify because they're both even numbers. You divide both by two, you're going to wind up with three fourths. So if you were to say, they ate three-fourths of a pizza. That would be even more precise. I forgot we put that in a cloud. Okay. So, in uh, however many minutes that was, 21 minutes! God, zooks. All right. Hang in there, kids. One more lesson tomorrow. And we're done. Well, we're done with this workbook anyway. All right. Aloha. Au revoir.